Hello everyone, Master Xeon1001 here. And before we begin with the process of breaking this down for baking and substance painter, I wanted to do a few corrections just based on the image. I feel that this area's closeness to the edge and our closeness are just very different. Same thing in this area, it looks a little bit better, but I feel, felt that there were some improvements that were able to be had if we look at the top area. We could probably get this just a little bit closer to what we're going for, however, you know, when it comes to references, it's always a gamble if you're going to get anything close to it, unless you model with it present in your viewport. But for me, if you can't tell by now, my goal is to be able to model re reflecting on images loosely instead of adhering to them strictly. So we're going to just start off moving this piece over just a little bit closer. And we can select this loop, Control plus plus, and I already have keystrokes displayed, so I don't know what I'm t saying all this for. And we'll move this over as well, just giving ourselves a little bit more boundary respective or um, a little bit more of a um, boundary with this particular area compared to what we were looking at before. So we can just leave it like so. And let's look at this area. We'll grab this area, just control plus plus to grow. And because our geometry sparseness, we're able to move it relatively easy. Just making this look better all in all. If we press Alt V and turn off wireframe, we can actually see what we're doing as far as damage. And with this area, I'm also thinking about just going into sculpt and pressing G to use the king of brushes, which is grab brush. And we're also gonna increment our file by one so that way we don't overwrite our progress from yesterday. So we're just making movements. And with this particular area, we're not gonna be able to move things with the topological brush, just using it with view, but we can get in to edit mode and make a few modifications just on a geometry level since our curvature is actually very, very sparing with this and the way that we have it configured. All right, and we don't even need to be in sculpt mode, but I definitely feel that what we're looking at now just looks a little bit better. This area is definitely gonna be interesting whenever it comes bake time, but I don't know if I wanna get in and fight this anymore. I mean, we did all of our fighting with it yesterday, just getting it smoother. In fact, that makes it just a little bit smoother, a little strangeness happening here, but that's what happens when you have subdivision as your auditor. So with that, now let's begin just giving this a final examination while we think about if we want to go ahead and proceed with the subdivision or the um, bake exporting, which involves us basically downpacking this asset. Also, there's a stripe that was here. I did not go for it, but we could have. So I'm just gonna grab this loop, SX or SY0, in order to straighten it. And let us just bevel this. We'll move it over on the Y just to keep it nice and controllable. And we'll just select all of our loop. Let's alt click EM macro in order to just push this out very quick. And this is basically what our result is. So if we wanted to, we could stretch this out in order to make it more accommodating. So we might as well do that. I'm gonna press B, box select and we'll just box select this area you know just thinking about what do i want to deform at this time and this is about as much as i want to deal with so let's just stretch it out just a little bit and that means that i just need to move the screw over slightly didn't mean to alt scroll change my shape but at least now we're at a level ready to proceed i'm just looking at the wireframe just to make sure that there's nothing else that's going to haunt us or be something that we have to change that will be regrettable with this area, we see that in the image, it's a little more straight and we made ours a little more rounded. And that was another thing I think I spotted when I was um, just staring at this, you know, before I began recording again, usually I spend a good moment just staring at my model and reflecting like um, the Ghost of Tsushima would, you know, write a haiku or two about my fallen geometry brethren and honoring their memory, which is the ninja samurai way. So let's just continue on. I'm gonna grab these, we'll bring this over. Control from this point to this point to grab everything in between. That means we don't have to rotate our view to look at it. 
And if we look at the side, we see that this one is a lot more intentional on this side. So just control clicking to just kind of grab that whole area. And I'm going to make a decision that may be controversial. Let's right click and terminate this short so we can have a loop at least coming all the way up. And the only purpose of this loop is to make this area hard enough for us to hold it whenever it comes to subdivision, but we accidentally put ourselves in shaded view. And I'm thinking that we can just begin requading this area and that will help it make a little bit more sense. And then we see that our corners lost their definition, which is what's making the shading look odd. So we definitely want to correct that sort of stuff on the subdivision mesh because everything that we do, every mistake is going to be baked over to the next mesh and we just don't want to deal with that. The other thing is I've been trying to determine the depth of this and it's just not entirely clear to me. And you know, we see some threads. It's like, do we got to do these threads? Do we really got to do these threads? I'm going to ignore those threads. I just got to you know, sometimes you just got to draw a line in the sand. You're like, look, I'm not doing any more threads right now. We've done so many threads for, you know, just trying to have fun with some modeling. <laughs> Making threads, I don't think, is, um, is definitely not my definition of fun with modeling. But we could just put some threads in there, in all honesty. Just have some fun with it. So, let's do it. This area looks like it's not going to be able to take a ton of threads. So let's press P, separate this, and we are going to just take this into local mode. And firstly, apply the mirror. And let's actually undo all of this because this thing's mirrored as well. And I just don't know if I want to get into it. You know, we just want to just move on past this and get to the next asset. But the rate that I'm going will definitely be here forever. So I'm just looking at this and thinking, should I press S, Shift, Y in order to scale it up? But in order to do that, we have to select these assets and press Alt P, clear transformation, press S, Shift, and X in order to, or S, Shift, and Y to scale on everything but the Y. And then we're able to basically scale this stuff up. So let's select this stuff, reparent it to this piece. And now we're just at least looking at something a little bigger for this. You know, I'm probably making it way too big. So let's actually dial it back just a little bit. Maybe to something like that. And let's just apply our scale, which will get the bevel to act the way that it's supposed to act. And, you know, you know that the modeling is getting good whenever it starts getting so hot in your office that you're sweating profusely. So one moment while I activate the fan. So as with all breakdowns, let's begin with the most painful part. In fact, I'm just going to shift S, save it, and let's look at our collections. Currently we have this one collection that has everything in it. We don't see any lights or cameras, which is good. That means this is the high collection. And what we can do is now begin working in the low collection, which is now being established by us right clicking and making a new collection. We'll call it low. If we look at collection three, Collection 3 doesn't appear to have anything in it, so we can actually just delete that. Junk is junk, so we still need junk, but Cutters is the last collection, so we now have kind of a clean setup one where we can press 1 and 2 to go from high to low. This is kind of how I traditionally work with Blender, uh, to each their own, of course. So I'm going to grab this piece, Big Chunky, and we're just going to move it to low and go to low and the first thing of course we're going to do is remove subdivision press alt v let's look at our wireframe and we still have mirror enabled and basically what we want to do is simplify our geometry to its most minimal levels without disrupting our silhouette so everything that was done for subdivision reinforcement is to be discarded however i've been reading some articles on poly count about baking and using uh, boundary loops in order to ensure that your bake rays get the correct normals and so we may be trying some of that and also would explain that what I'm doing right now is um, counter to that but you know when it comes to me and texture painting I, I try to be a little bit experimental about it just like I am with modeling 
you know, you'll probably never catch me talking about the book. However, anytime I run into a problem, the book is my immediate fallback. You know, it's like, how do you do this? Well, I'm going to do it by the book. What's the book say? Well, the book says block it in, build it up level by level, and then just keep going from there until your computer dies. You know, which book? Any book. But, you know, my favorite, whenever it comes to um, what I refer to as a book, I just talk about Polycount a lot. Polycount is what I consider the um, the elite CG zone. So much that I don't even post on it, but I do spend a lot of time lurking it. My goal is to definitely get an understanding of 3D. And so, you know, whenever it comes to doing content, I, I definitely am not going to be out here doing content about topics that I'm unfamiliar with because, you know, if you've ever read any of the contents in these videos, there's an endless group of people who will, you know, correct every single mistake ever made. So, you know, most topics that are unfamiliar are not even worth exploring in video content because you're just going to be wrong. And I mean, you know, the purpose of tutorials to basically explain a, a workflow. So that, that, that they, they are counter to each other. But also it, it gets a little, a little nasty on the tube. So human interaction has to be kept very minimal. That way I could um, have a good day. Otherwise, I'm just caught up with all these people who are determined to ruin my day. Which is just a terrible attitude to have. If your day is built off of the termination of other people's days, then you should probably stop having them. Days, I mean. So let us go ahead and begin sliding in this geometry. Still just merging. You know, nothing to write home about but I am thinking very hard about which loops I'm dissolving because if we start getting rid of the silhouette, it's going to look really weird when it comes time for the bake. So we definitely want to make sure that we're taking good care of them. However, I'm looking at this geometry and this geometry is such a ponder. Let's just shift G normal, shift H. We'll just select all of this shift H and I'm just needing to solve this but you know I didn't like what I was seeing when I was getting in here being reductive with it so whenever it comes to down packing my thought process is always going to be how do you get the poly count as low as possible you know right now we're at 716 verts you know just the process of making things suitable for subdivision is why this type of workflow definitely isn't suitable for for game assets because, you know, game engines don't have subdivision unless they do. I, I'd like to see that game. But, you know, all you got is tessellation. So triangles, I consider triangles fully on the menu whenever it comes to baking meshes. Uh, I read a lot of stuff where people swear by all quads and things like that. I mean, you're not going to see me trying to bake in guns. We're not barbarians, but, you know, triangles, I've seen some impressive things with triangles. And just thinking about what is the nearest reduction point that will not cause us a whole lot of grief. And because of our lack of auto smooth, it's hard to understand which plane we're, we're actually looking at. So I'm just going to get in here and continue reducing leaps and reducing leaps, reducing loops until we get pollution down to zero. But anyways, back to what I was talking about previously. So I have nothing against being corrected. You know, mistakes happen, and it's important for the learning process to be corrected. But there, there is sometimes a little bit of toxicity. I mean, you guys probably don't see it because I will scorch earth. You know, don't need that on my content on an educational video. So catch a hot block. But definitely want to uh, keep things from from getting to a toxic level because you know first it starts with workflow arguing and then it becomes software arguing and then you know uh, workflow elitism if you're not using this workflow you're lesser you know we don't want to go down that road in fact you know I received a lot of correspondence saying you know why not just use marmoset and I was going to do it yesterday but I'm determined to make substance painter work I mean surely they're not selling a program with a broken baker so 
we got to get in there and actually find out for ourselves hey is this thing working the way it's supposed to and the answer is you know it's working um, supposed to is variable depending on what you're going for if you're exporting a if you're dealing with ABC's um, you'll definitely be dribbling your lips like a Looney Tunes character and doing your ABC's by the end of it if you're dealing with the ABC follow and substance but I'm pretty sure that's an easy fix on their side for substance painters so you know I complained about today tomorrow it'll probably be dead who knows unless they get got Adobe in which you know no progress comes for an entire year and everything just takes forever because of red tape but not not Wessie Wessie McD you know he's our boy he's a good boy So let us just continue merging points, sliding things around, performing reductions in areas that probably should have had reductions. And we have got this thing down to 411 vertices, but double that and we're, that's what our actual count is going to be. So in my head, you know, I don't have a particular poly count I'm going for. Usually I'll reduce it until I'm sure that I've reduced it to the best of my ability and analyze the result and decide from there do I need to um, be even more reductive for example with this area I'm just going to turn this all into tries because this is an interior flatty you know who cares about it no one's going to be looking at this part I'm not going to be exposing a I mean uh, exporting a exploded view of this on the sketchfab I don't know maybe I was thinking about doing cutout views of all these hydraulics just as a thing for this challenge so that way users would definitely gain an understanding of how these things work because you know I was low-key told that um, I didn't understand how pistons work so you know rather than get angry I realized yeah probably right you know I probably have something I can learn about this so that's why I'm in here actually doing pistons right now is so I can have a better understanding of you know the types of pistons that are available and what what purposes they offer so that way you know next we talk about them we can come from a point of reality which is also part of the 3d pursuit you know is improving your own understanding and studying and bettering yourself as an artist by learning things you know every day i try to learn something you know i have i had someone um mention in a video something about this giant engine documentary i've been watching that thing it's giving me more of an understanding of giant engines. So, you know. Takes longer than a day, though. You know, I think I said it previously in a video, but, you know. By the time you ever get good at 3D, you will no longer even wonder. Will Am I getting good at 3D? Will I get good at 3D? How long does it take to get good at 3D? Like, those questions are just the most beginner questions ever. Because the answer is based on you. Like once you get to where you're going as far as skill is concerned, you know, once you're like a Rochamaru level and you've absorbed all the skills of all the Shinobi, there's still something to learn. You know, whenever your attitude is that you no longer have anything to learn, then you're, you're done for. You're going to grow stagnant and become a fossil, become an ancient meme. You know, one of those um, holdouts, um, unable to move with the time. So you definitely don't want that. I mean, I'm just looking at this stuff really harshly, and I feel like we could slide that out and pull it, pull it off. But it is probably a mistake that we did there. And in the middle of all these pieces, I'm looking at all this geo, but I don't need to be looking at it. We could basically be sliding this stuff in just at least reducing it because it's all planar areas so having it around is really just us being sedimental with our geometry so we've just been sitting here talking and reducing this piece and talking and reducing this piece and just you know shooting the shooting the poo and just passing some time and now we're looking at 347 times two so it's like i don't know 700 but there is even more reduction able to be done with this and you know, maybe we can get experimental with the bake and learn some things as well. But I'm going to try to just get through this because 
you know, troubleshooting in the bake process is just terrible. I hate having to come back to the modeling side or the UVing side because of inadequacies at bake time. So let's go to the next piece. So we have that piece, worst piece done. Let's take this piece, duplicate it. We'll move it to low. And first of all, let's get rid of subdivision. Let's get rid of bevel. Let's get rid of triangulate. And, you know, for a split second, I was thinking, you know, this mesh is fine. It is not. All these extra loops doing nothing. You know, you can see that they're doing nothing because when I remove them, the shading hardly changes, you know, just a little bit. And that's usually how I check myself for if a loop is useless or not. You know, we might even try displacing the mesh on the normals right before we export it just to see if that can assist us with the next aspect of the pipeline. But let's just tie this area off and just wrap it, meaning that I'm just going to correct everything like so. And I'm just going to right click subdivide. Let's select all these points, select all the way to here, select this point, press Q and under operations, we can use star connect, which will connect everything at the same point. You know, star connect doesn't need to be anything special. Like, like I, I think I said that in my last time, last visit of star connect, you know, star connect doesn't have to do anything miraculous. It just has to work. And that is miraculous. So let's do origin to selection. And I'm going to mirror this to the other side. And so this is what we're looking at as far as our geometry is concerned. Let's also compare it with our first layer just to make sure that we're not doing anything dangerous when we're setting up our remarrying. So, so far, so good. And we could probably just bake once. Is that okay? I was looking at that. I was like, is that correct? So we could probably do one screw separately and then have that baked data transfer to everything instead of having a UV island for every single screw, which is something I've seen much smarter people than myself do. It doesn't take a lot to be smarter than me. You know, I can't stress it enough. I'm like a uh, disabled person in the realm of 3D. I'm just a guy trying my best, you know. That's all I, all I can tell you guys. Like, we're just, we're all just trying. Getting better by the day, you know. Uh, only difference between us is probably the amount of practice, if anything. You know, I practice every single day in the call center, every day since this tool has been built. You know, I don't think I've ever went a single day without blending. Maybe a couple, but nothing I can recall. You know, there's no way I would um, I would fail. You know, my first regimen when I wake up in the morning is not even breakfast. You know, it's actually to get on Blender and get to work. You know, I will wake straight up, just jump out of bed. My girlfriend will be mad, but it's not even work ethic. It's just, I know that to even compete in this world, to survive, I can't stop practicing. You know, um, you could say all day, hey, you're good, you know, but there's always a, a new level to get to. And there's so many things that I actually wish I could do that I can't do. So, you know, to me personally, I feel like there is a very long road left to walk. You know, the most hard surface form to me is a woman. You know, women have, you know, their hard points on their bodies, but you know, they're surrounded in such soft angles that are just, just impossible, you know. Much respect to uh, Danny Mac. You know, I, I definitely admire his work very much, but I, I feel that women are the ultimate hard surface form. And, you know, that sounds really crazy, I know, but look at a lot of uh, women and just the shapes are just so advanced. Such advanced shapes involved in a uh, female body. I mean, males too, males also have have their things, but I mean, you know, us as artists, we always go for the, uh, was it endomorphic male, which is, uh, you know, the, the built male. We don't ever make, uh, you know, fat slobby bastards like us, you know, like, um, I have all my characters look terrible like me. I'm an ugly guy. That's why I'm not on camera. Also, it's irrelevant. 
to be on camera. You know, there's nothing that I need to express to you guys with my mouth uh, enough to show it in a video because I am literally just what you see. I am just a mouse cursor dealing with polygons. I'm a machine. Not like the machine, but you know, who I am means nothing. You know, I always tell people I am no one. I'm just a person. I'm just a guy. I'm just a guy like you're a guy. And we also want to get rid of that, but I'm just thinking about how we could be solving these areas alternatively, but like I said, I always get a little bit experimental whenever it comes to my geometry because the name of the game for this is literally just breaking it down so it all bakes, at least to me. You know, there's probably more rules to it. You know, as I'm reading this uh, Polygon article, I'm, I'm seeing that, you know, edge flows also matter in terms of baking. So I might come back talking about just edge flows and baking, but I don't think it's ever come up in a job. You know, I've had some jobs where I've had to, you know, bake stuff using X normal and then hand plane, which, you know, hand plane's actually cool. I can't be on this video talking smack about hand plane saying I hate it. I love little hand plane. Hand plane's cool. You know, I also love null. You know, once I get into the thick of these things, I actually do very much enjoy it. You know, I'm, I'm talking smack right now, like as if I'm miserable with this, but for me, it's just Tetris. It's just thinking about a puzzle as we just rush through this mesh like Sonic the Hedgehog and do the worst unpacking job ever. Just kidding. You know, maybe we're not doing that bad. <laughs> this mesh has an edge in the middle, but it's not a real edge. What am I looking at? Oh, it's an edge down the middle. Let's just apply the mirror. And we're just going to press F and then poke it. And I do think we're going to get rid of this loop, but maybe not that one. We don't want to skew it too bad on the way in. You know, I'll just put that, I just put that piece there because I'm formal. You know, I'm just a weirdo. You know, I'm like tuxedo mask. You know, I'll walk you home, Sailor Moon. So... We will just fill these points in, just give it a nice little connection, and we realize that the loop that we are connecting it to is absolutely useless. And let's just get, get reducing, guys. It's reducing time. You know, and then we raise up our decimation badge and transform into the Power Rangers. Or the Decimation Rangers, you know. I was about to sing the uh, Decimation Rangers song, but I'm not going to... I always think to myself, uh, outside of videos, I'm like, I'm glad I don't sing in these videos. You know, that would be weird. But I, I get the urge sometimes. Not saying I'm a uh, opera singer or something, like I'm a guy that just longs to sing like a Disney character, but you know, we're just passing time. You know, when I don't have to narrate these hotkeys, so much is free to me. Like, I feel like we've really, accomplished our goals of establishing some fundamentals and some baseline content for a new user. So we're just gonna just keep going forward. You know, instead of doubling back on the fundamentals over and over, we're just gonna just keep going. If you're just jumping on and you're like, I don't get this or this, check out the older videos. There's a whole topo study playlist where I tried to go in depth multiple times and people said it was too long. So go and check that out and get out of here you scamp you know same thing i tell my cats get out of here you little scamps you know both my cats 100 percent certified scamps especially apple apple's like the biggest scamp of all but she's america's scamp but she does run away from guests the moment they arrive which is almost funny except it kind of um it's heartbreaking you know people come over they're like i gotta meet apple you know she's a famous cat you know, because of me, because I just won't stop talking about her. And, you know, she's nowhere to be found. You know, that cat will hide until you leave. So let's just save this. Right now we're at 1,667 polys, which just seems like a lot. Where's all these polys coming from? 
Let's double check this. And I'm thinking that for the most part, this is looking good. I mean, we could reduce that, reduce that. I mean, we're really just taking this Geo for a ride. The unwrap is going to be a little bit of a pain, but let's just keep on. So this thing's 231 times two, so it's really not that piece. We are, we're being over dramatic, more than likely. All right, so let's go to this layer and we'll grab the next piece, which is this one. Let's move it over to low and we'll just remove the bevel, remove the subdivision. And I believe our work is done already. You know, we could poke this. We could grab this face, poke it as well. You know, a little poking. And let's also re-UV this thing because I'm not liking what I'm seeing on these UVs. Let's uh, control E mark seam sometimes i'll use hops to mark my seams but other times i will just explicitly do it manually using just blender because Control e and mark seam isn't that bad it's when you have to press shift e to do a crease that i start getting driven crazy i hate pressing shift e and then moving my mouse all the way over to the right especially if i have to do it a ton of times it just starts wearing down on my uh, sanity so let's go back to this layer and we are going to just attempt to get a shape around this. E, S, and right now I'm listening to Interpol, which, you know, Interpol is like the greatest of alternative. You know, someone came up to me and they were like, hey, editor is the greatest alternative of all time. I would just, those are fighting words, all right? But you're also right. Um, the editor is, is very good. You know, I'm telling you, I just like the saddest music. Like the sadder the song is, the more there I am. Like I have this whole playlist of like final music, you know, just the last songs you'll probably ever need to listen to in life if you're about to um, pursue the next level of destiny. But yeah, just alternative just really hits that spot. You know, can't be singing too much about monetary things in life. You know, it gets boring. But the sadness of life, that's something that every person can relate and connect with. Let's grab this and dissolve it. You know, I'm pretty sure most people have experienced uh, love loss you know so for this piece i'm looking at it thinking about its reduction and if i should reduce it and i'm just not even gonna risk it you know as um, eminem would say you know i'm not gonna risk it not over this you know i'll drop the biscuit and so let's uh, move this over and we are going to delete subdivision and go in local mode So while I'm not the biggest fan of rap, you know, the last rap I ever listened to was probably Slim Shady. And then when I watched him uh, get commercialized pretty good, I was like, ooh, ouchies, I was done. But yeah, like the oldest of rap, oldest of rap is just great. And I'm talking about like Ghetto Boys, old rap. Just, just, a, just a time, you know, even the lyrical content was just so much deeper. You know, that's what will uh, really make me change my mind on, on some music. You know, I start listening to it over and over and over and over. And eventually I start wondering about the lyrics. And I start looking up the lyrics. So many bands have just been forgotten about due to failing the lyrical check. So right now we're at 2,120 verts. Not doing too bad. Let's go ahead and convert just one of these babies. And I'm just going to take it in local mode. Let's control tilde and we are going to get rid of bevel. We're going to get rid of subdivision. And we're also going to get rid of mirror. And I know this is dramatic in this shape. It's dramatic in here right now. So how do we want to deal with this? 
firstly, we definitely do not want these loops present. And I'm just looking at this thinking in reductionist terms. You know, how can I reduce this? And the answer is not very much. I mean, we can, but we don't want to sacrifice what they're asking us to sacrifice. And also, you know, like I said, I have like an old man reductionist capability, uh, reductionist mindset. Like I reduce this stuff as if it's still 1985 and we're preparing stuff for the PlayStation one or something. And you know, you don't have to work like that anymore. You really do not, but old habits, you guys. But like I said, if there's a book on it, I will try to do things by it because it's just the easiest. It's just easy to just follow the protocol of a book. But you know, when it comes to downpacking and blender, you just gotta do what it takes to just get the job done. We are going to clear any hops markings and let's think about how we want to unwrap this. If we were to, I'm most curious as to why this loop doesn't continue all the way. So let's hide it. And we're just looking on the inside just to make sure there's no interior faces because we got no time for that. Uh, let's see what it looks like if we just give this one seam like so you know, control M or control, was it control E mark seam? All right, so let's just press U and unwrap this. And we see that we probably need a UV image editor for this. And this is what we're looking at so far with this. So what is our goal with this? We could break it into separate pieces, just control clicking edges until we get all the way around, mark the seam, Press U, and this is what we're looking at. However, even that doesn't look close enough to what we're dealing with with this shape. So let's clear the seam. So now we have that piece. And for this piece, we actually want it to probably lay down in the form of a grid. This area doesn't even need to exist. We're just, we're being extra. And it's important to fight these urges. Let's press SX, P. We'll just U, unwrap. Something broke my selection and it's right here. And we'll just go in, unwrap this again. Select the body, and we just want to press P to lock that in. And I'm just going to snap this to vertex G, Y, and we're just trying to bring it up here. We'll press P, and we just want to bring this over till we snap here. You know, I can't even tell what we're snapping to. So that should be enough to help us out. Let's unwrap and we see that we can SX, P, U, and you know, we got something a little bit more, more flat for our situation. Also control P used to pack islands. I don't know what happened there, but I miss it. I used to always be about that control P life. So now we have one of these bolts place and if we look at our first layer and our second layer we see that between our 417,000 vert model we now have a 2307 vert version which who knows how much troubleshooting we're about to be having to do and for cables cables are such a pain I was thinking about trying to merge them together and create like a really effective low poly version but life be too short guys life be too short let's get in remove subdivision and let's look at our curve settings because it's the resolution that we want to reduce we want to get it at least down to something reasonable like maybe even something like that let's look at it compared to layer one and we are at least still around the shape if we add a level of subdivision on it it's at least a little more controllable let's reduce our resolution just a couple more and 
we'll just adjust our curve to at least make sure we're encompassing it. I know, really strange. And it looks like we have to convert the whole thing to a mesh in order to look at this with this wireframe present. So now we at least now have a curve that's a little bit more efficient than what we had initially where I feel that there were too many U spans. We had V taken care of, but U was just a little hardcore and something like that will do. I mean, at least with that, we have the flexibility to go back in and make changes. I could go in and just be reducing loops, but you know, maybe every other loop. And I regret it as soon as I made the decision to do it. Because right now we're definitely conforming to this piece a lot better. And so whenever we bake, we'll definitely get a very nice bake. But these reductions are what's going to come back and haunt us. Us trying to be smart, we're going to outsmart ourselves and end up getting ourselves beat with the belt by the baker. So let us just continue grabbing these loops, just holding an alt and clicking loops. And even though I'm over here listening to Interpol, you know, I'm starting to miss some fights, let me tell you. I've been listening to fights for like 30 days solid, like a lunatic. That's how it'd be sometimes. I'll just get hooked on an artist and go through their whole discography to find where they either lost their originality or achieved immortality. Yeah, I'm, I'm weird. I'm a weirdo with music. Yeah, I love listening to Dio's live shows because I feel like he um, he loves his fans. He does such a good job being a crowd pleaser at his show, so it's always fun watching Dio perform live. I'm talking about the Holy Diver Dio, too. So now we're at 2,955, which is a good stopping place for us to stop at this time when it comes to us talking about the breakdown process. So I'm gonna press Control Alt Spacebar in order to bring my view back. And let's also turn on grid for a moment just so I can ground myself in 3D reality. We can also turn back on 3D cursor and extras and floor just because we'll need it for where we're going. And I'm just going to shrink this window a little bit. I was about to get rid of it, but we actually need it. And here we are going to hack hard ops again. So we can create a UV modifier, I mean, we create a UV material using the UV project modifier on, let's see, shift click. So if we shift click it, we'll create a material for UV project. And all we have to do is delete the empties and UV project. And we basically created a UV material just by shift clicking this. So I know it's weird, but that, that's how often I need it is that sometimes I just need to just add a mod. I mean, uh, add a mod, remove a mod, and just keep the material, and that's really all I need. So we can just call this Matt UV, and if we press Alt V and we go over to Solid Texture Toggle, we can see that we're able to see our UV, except that this model's not UV. You know, if we went under Hops and we just did Auto Unwrap, we now have the UVs and we can see them in the viewport. So let's select everything, Control L, Link Material. So now everything has this UV material. So with that, let us just begin this great UV extravaganza. So of course, we need to select everything. We'll save it, and then we'll jump our save just one more level. Since this one is the one for just breaking it down, this one's the one for unwrapping. Just in case we make a mistake and have to go back, I'm going to control A, visual geometry to mesh, just because we are dealing with reality, except being so drastic on these decisions isn't smart. We don't want to just remove all of our modifiers just like that. We'll deal with it on a one by one level because we still want to be smart. We want to let the modifiers work for us, not the other way around. Make the modifiers make us work. No, forget about it, um, is what a mobster would say. So we are just going to clear seams and let's go on local mode and think about this. So I'm thinking that a seam here. Let's see. Um, control E, K. No, that's not correct. Uh, control E, and we want to mark seam, so Control E, M. There's always a faster way to work in Blender. Like, for example, I can just press Control E, M, Control E, M, and just jump through this. And that's something I never talk about because I consider it a kind of advanced level. If I start doing that, you guys will definitely start getting lost. So now that we've split this area properly, control E, M, how do we want to split this area up? Because imagining it all together, it's gonna to be a little bit tougher. We could 
place a line straight down the middle, but I feel like having a line straight down the middle is just not a very smart decision. So let's go ahead and apply the mirror and let's just you unwrap and look at what we're getting with our unwrap. So this area looks good. This area does not. So how can we fix it? Well, I am just going to split it in half like a coconut because life is too short. I'd rather learn a lesson about baking than fight with a UV all day. Let's press U, unwrap. We're looking at the modifiers as well while also checking our UV. Since we have UV squares enabled, we can at least say to grid and we're, we're in better shape. Let's select this piece. You unwrap, let's select this piece to grid by shape, and we are good to go. So, you know, the UVing process in Blender is, I handle it in a really simplified way. You know, there's definitely some things that, you know, advanced stuff that UV should be able to do, like relaxing UVs is, could be more straightforward instead of using the sculpt tools, but I'm just a guy. And we're just unwrapping it. I miss live unwrap. I feel like Live Unwrap used to be around somewhere, and now we just don't have it anymore. Here we go, Live Unwrap. So Live Unwrap is now here. You know, they should put this option in multiple places because otherwise it's just nuts. And let's go back to Solid View so we can think about this on seam terms. How do we want to split this? I'm thinking that we split it like so. You know, we kept this big line, even though it wasn't needed. So if we mark this, not seam, uh, well, we want to mark this as seam, not sharp. If we unwrap, actually, it looks like it's unwrapping automatically for us. Good old uh, unwrap. And just looking at this and thinking and thinking. And in this area, we have a very long cylinder. So let's just fix that. might have also wanted to keep them all together. But live unwrap, I'm like a dog that caught his tail. Now that I have it, I don't know what to do. Let's try conformal. You know, sometimes I go between angle based and conformal just to see if I can get something a little bit more relaxed. Also, we're gonna need to make this window just a little bit bigger, meaning that we can make this one a little bit smaller because we do need the UV window. We don't need all this other stuff going on around it. So. If we just look at this and think about it, you know, what are we getting here? And what is our bake going to look like with our geometry looking like that? It's going to look interesting, that's for sure. But it doesn't look even, and that's a problem. You know, if we unwrap this, let's try angle base. And I don't think any of these options will be able to help us with this situation. So I'm going to you project from view. Let us, I don't even know if that's the right loop. Let's just press P and we'll just unwrap it again. And we at least receive the piece offset on the inside. That was the first solution that came to my mind was just try something like that. Um, because who knows, I, I'm pretty sure that when I, as I do these videos, I'll keep running into parts that are just unplanned for catastrophes of strategization you know we'll have to think fast on our feet for example i'm going to also project this from view we'll grab the ring we will just press p to pin that ring press u unwrap which will offset everything inside and at least keep the same perimeter as our ring let's just unwrap for this back area I'm thinking that we are going to have to split this off, even though I'm not going to be looking down this hole. L. Okay, so without a seam going directly down the middle, this cylinder is just a disaster waiting to happen. So now this piece is looking good. If we look at everything, we can actually select everything and just go under UV, choose to average islands. Let's see, we'll select everything. And I'm gonna just right click and we're gonna assign the shortcut of Control A. 
and we're going to assign the shortcut of Alt P. So Control A, Alt P. Except that Alt P isn't going to be a thing today. We'll just pack it manually. So giving us this as our UV result, but that piece is probably the most daunting piece of all. And we are now past it. So just an end of that nightmare. For this one, we're gonna to need to deal with the scale, but I feel that the UVs we've given it are fairly adequate, except for the center receiving such a reduction. So let's just grab it and grow it and just see if we can All right, we have proportional editing on. That's what's making things look weird for us right now. So maybe at least something like that. I need to at least see what's happening in the center area. And looking at this piece, you know, I almost get the urge to want to, let's see, project from view. And then we just select our boundary and pin it, and then unwrap. And we still have the littlest circle in the center. So maybe something like that. We don't need to give so much room to our gap. And I still feel like this circle is completely out of line. So let's try that again. We'll just get a little weird with our UVs. U project from view we are going to pin this area because I feel like we're about to get a one pixel center and I just I don't got time for that today let's press you unwrap let's press P we'll select this whole island you unwrap and we could probably scale this out as well you know getting real weird here we're probably going to end up having to use something more by the book you know anytime i get experimental it comes back to haunt me but we have overlapping uvs happening in this area so we do have to unpin let's try pinning that and unwrap again and we see that it still is a little out of control. So let's try with conformal. All right, this area has beaten me today. We're losing so much time just talking about this screw, but that area, the way that looks at this time actually looks pretty optimal for what our needs are. So. Let's just try going with it, even though I'm pretty sure that we have eaten our rings for lunch thanks to projecting from view. We're just going to choose to project our islands. And we really can't because this whole area is overlapping in the worst way. So we need to reselect this. You unwrap. That is just terrible. So let's try something angle based. And I'm thinking that we need to. Firstly, get in here and inspect our loops. That loop is not required. And this loop can be marked. So let's unwrap it again. And we don't want to disrupt the area that we already dealt with earlier. So, you know, I'm just being very OCD about this wrap. but sometimes it is required. And it looks like live unwrap was hidden for a reason. That's because it's a jerk, just kidding. But, you know, live unwrap will correct my UVs, even the areas that are important. So let's look at it now. Now we actually have everything that we need, except for this area needing to be split down the middle. So let's mark that as same. And we're just looking at what we received. You know, I'm thinking we can probably just 
cut that part off which means that this area can be converted into a grid shape you know just think in terms of tetris right now let us take this moment to pack our islands and we can get off of the screw of nightmares this object is mirrored that means we never unwrapped it in fact the, the uvs we're looking at are based on our uh, auto unwrap which you could probably get away with but you know when it comes to client work i just don't cut any corners i give them the i give them the blood and sweat they deserve or or don't deserve you know however you feel about clients but for me i feel like clients are paying for a degree of pain so i am willing to deliver it it's like as if you hired a jigsaw We'll select everything, press U to unwrap, which will give us this. And I'm not digging what I'm seeing. L, 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 L. Let's just merge and center. And I don't even want to, I do want to know what happened. Let's control Z and we'll just see if control Z will give us the mesh back when we had a mirror. So let's just bring our mirror all the way to the junction point. Cause what are, what are we doing? What is this nonsense we're fighting against here? Let's control a unwrap. And so now we can grab this shape grid by shape and we are doing good. So we are just, you know, running through these pieces like a, like a hot knife. We'll clear the seams. And what I want to do is make this its own piece. Maybe a little better than that. Yeah, I miscalculated what my edge selection was going to be. But something like that will give us a much nicer, at least general rim. Except for this edge that we missed. So now we have that on this side. And so I also want something similar on this side. So we'll just mark it as the same. And now we have that. So now this one area is imperfect. We'll go ahead and mark that as what seems and we see that we are done. And there's so little work left to talk about. You know, I hope you guys miss me when I'm gone. But if not, we have this moment and the here and now to enjoy each other. So I'm just going to grab these loops, control E, mark seams. And we'll press L, grid by shape, L, grid by shape. And we're just gonna scale that down, giving that a set of nice UVs too. This area is just some plugs. So let's just clear any seams, U, unwrap, but we do wanna apply our mirror. So that way when we press U and unwrap, we actually get two. And I just wonder about this. Does this even need to be part of the, the mesh the way it is? Probably not. I'm, I, that's probably an area that I'll be kicking myself for later because I did it in a silly way. So I'm just selecting one edge, control clicking to the other side. And we're just going to press control E and mark seam. And we're going to do the same thing on this side. Just run all the way down and just mark seams and you see that as we get through this the mesh just opens itself up to us it's really a beautiful thing i i love me some live unwrap i'm so glad i found it today otherwise this just would have been a video where i've been like hey guys i can't find my live unwrap but you know let's just do this the way that i would do it except without a live unwrap so looking at our uvs in this window I'm thinking that we can grab from this point to this point, S, Y, P. We can grab this point to this point, S, Y, P. We can grab these points to here, S, Y, 0, P, S, X, P. And I can also control click to select in between, which is kind of nice because I'm literally just locking down all of the boundaries in a straight fashion so I can press you and unwrap again and actually get something that is more linear.
I'm sure there's uh, better ways, but we're almost at the finish line, which means I start, you know, when, when I see the finish line in sight, I have to admit that's when I will start cutting some corners. If the finish line is in sight, I mean, don't, don't keep the finish line out of my sight because I will lose the morale to complete the job. But um, if I see the finish line within sight, I got to get there. You know, that's such a big piece. I mean, just sitting up there like that. But if we put a seam down the middle, it'll come back to haunt us in Substance Painter, just like it did on the previous version. So I'm just wondering to myself, do I even want that? So to really wrap this video now that we've unwrapped it, and according to the timer, we've been at this for about 19 minutes. So we've done pretty nice as far as time efficiency goes. We haven't lost a whole lot of time. We have enough time to select each piece and give it a name. So we're just going to call this roundy high F2 roundy low H. We'll go with this, call it roundy one low. Go to, let's see, uh, I'm pressing the F key, sorry, F2. And we'll just call this roundy one high hide it we're going to call this um screw bar high and we're just going to select the beginning of this so, and we need to actually rethink how we want to deal with this because these two pieces are buddies this one and this one so we need to apply the bevel and then join these two together and let's go to F2. We want to call the screw bar high H. We want to call this one screw bar low high. Let's call this one um, worst piece ever underscore low. You know, I just get funny with these names by the end. Uh, let's go to layer one and we're going to press F2 and worst piece ever dot high because that piece just, uh, if I have to see it again, it'll be too soon. We'll call this um, back piece one underscore low. We'll copy that to our clipboard. We'll go to this piece, rename this high. We'll call this backy back underscore low. And let's just copy that as well go to our first layer and we'll just call this underscore high let's hide it this area is called doom cylinder dot high we'll just grab that and we can go to our second layer and f2 and i'll keep pressing the wrong keys it happens sometimes and we'll just call that low and Holes high F2. Oh, we don't want to paste that. Let's go back. You know, there's all these F keys I'm pressing and then actual number keys. It just gets confusing. So let's go back to our main layer. And I'm just going to separate one of these from the other just so we can call this um, wire one high you know why are we baking a wire these are things i ponder sometimes whenever i'm baking wires i'm like why are we baking this wire low we want to f2 low we'll go back to layer one that one's wire one this one we'll call this wire two dot high you know, high to that. So wire two, wire one, doom cylinder, holes. If we go back to our other layer, we don't have a whole lot left. So the only area to really talk about now is this screw and this screw. So let's just F2, we'll just call this doom screw dot high. And we'll post that as doom screw low. So now everything on the high and the low has been named.
so we can get on with our lives. However, we are going to need to place screws in all of these areas um, to replace the ones that were lost on a special low. We could bake with this one and then we can actually replace it with a proper low that actually has everything in place. But it does mean that once we begin painting on one bolt, it's going to propagate everywhere else. So now that we have everything named, let's save our file. And I'm just going to select everything, tap into edit mode. And this is what our UVs look like. Be very proud of yourself. Just kidding. They look terrible right now. But if we select everything and we choose to average island scale, and then we choose to pack it, we're getting something like this. And you know, one of my favorite parts of UVing is just seeing what UV Packmaster does. Because for one, it does it very fast. UV Packmaster just does not mess around. But also, you know, I am just such a sucker for things that use GPUs and processors effectively. So, you know, whenever it comes to my personal workflow, if it utilizes any sort of uh, computer enhancement, like GPU or anything, I am totally there. Let's um, put a one in front of all this because I feel like our gaps were a little too small, but now they're too high. Let's divide it by two one more time. All right, something like that. And I like to leave just a little bit of space in my maps just in case I have to do things later. I mean, it never comes up, but every now and then there comes a time where they're like, hey, I need you to add this extra thing to your map. And it's like, oh man. All righty, let's do it. We just wanna have the room to do such. And just because you're a computer doesn't mean there's not some improvements I can make with getting this thing placed just a little bit better. In fact, if we look at all this stuff, this stuff has no textile density. So we're just gonna place it here and just roll with that, you know, because maybe it's just doing that in accordance with, with the scale, but I am gonna scale it up a little bit. Just, you know, don't tell anyone I did that, but from here, let's also go back into this one more time. We're gonna select everything, go back into our UVs. And using textile density, I just want to calculate my TD and then set the value and then set my textile density based on what I'm getting. And then from here, we can actually use UV Packmaster again to pack everything back into place. And this time, I don't even know if I feel like fighting against the machine except that these little circles are just terrible. Let's control A, apply our scale, and let's try it again. We'll go to textile density and just choose set my TD. You know, maybe calculate it. And let's now go back to UV Packmaster, repack it again see what we get and go back to our viewport. So with that, we've now at least UV mapped this on a basic level for us to get it out. However, I'm pretty sure there's some troubleshooting that will be coming with further steps of this process. But at least for now, we have our high mesh that started out at 417. We have our broken down version that goes down to 2,933. So with that, I will wrap up this video for now. So let us try out the bake process. I'm just going to select everything of the high and make sure we have an active selection and under Q, we'll go to settings, export, OBJ. And I'm just going to jump to my piston demo folder. And this fallout file is called piston04 underscore two, which it actually names that just by default, good old blender. And everything is just set up from here. Let's also set ourselves to at least put an underscore high at the end, just so we know. And we'll wait a minute and allow us to export while we look at this black window and wonder why this window is still here. It's such an old window, but it still is part of the bake export and processing process of Blender. And, you know, the high, it'll take a second. You know, you always will find yourself waiting on the high to really get it together. But let's jump over to the low, which is the next layer. We select everything with something as our active selection. Press Q and go to export, and we're just gonna export the OBJ. At this time, we're just gonna put the word low at the end. For me, I just go with HI and LO for low, but you know, the literal words can also suffice for it. So now let's pop open Substance Painter. 
and we're just waiting for that to pop up. And while I'm waiting for it, I'm also going to grab my folder directory location. So that way we can quickly load it up. I shield my eyes whenever I see the splash screen, especially with the big Adobe logo. I'm like, uh, just look away. I'm covering my eyes right now, even though you can't, you can't see me, but I'm just, man, hurry and load, man. You torture me all day with this image. And let's just place our view. Let's go to new. And we're just going to import our mesh. These are images. We want to import our mesh. So it's under this file. And we're going to import our low. Document resolution 2048. Let's click OK. And here we are looking at our piston over in Substance Painter. Looking pretty good. Aside from the fact that there's no maps on it, so it looks really boring. So let's take also this pack, this aspect of our low looks really simplified. So let's just get to it. Let's go ahead and bake it using the same workflow that we used previously, where we literally just get in here, set our maps to be 2048. And we also didn't do any material colors on the high. So we're not going to get an ID map this time. So we'll probably need to go back and deal with that. We'll set it from high to low, match by mesh name, anti-aliasing, little 4x, never hurt anybody. Just your render times will make it take longer to process, but they'll look better. So let's let these bake. And I love watching these bakes take place in Substance Painter. Like when they added this screen, I was really impressed because it lets you know what's happening with your bake and you can really read it and tell how good of a job you're doing just from there. So let us pull in and we see that we have some terribleness happening. So this area is going to be the area that we'll be troubleshooting around. So I'm just going to lower this back to 0.1, which is where it was. And let's also turn off averaging normals and let's just bake that again. And it looks even worse than it did before. So all of these little black edges that are happening, you know, how are we able to mitigate these issues that are happening with the bake? Because they shouldn't actually be happening at all. Let's go to bake. And we are just going to turn average normals back on. Let's take a look at our normal settings. Our normal settings are already on screen, but we see that there's not really a lot that's able to be done with that. So while this is baking and failing, we're just gonna go back and talk about our mesh. So I'm thinking that for this mesh, or actually a, a couple of these meshes, we will need to just disable auto smooth in order to simplify the baking process. So these meshes are what is selected. And I'm just gonna go under normals and uncheck auto smooth and then right click and copy that to select it. So all of these pieces look the way that they do. We'll select everything, export, OBJ, never FBX with me. But I won't grief you for using FBX, just Autodesk is uh, Autodesk, Autodesk, yeah, Autodesk really trying to force their way into a lot to FBX format. And, you know, every time I deal with FBX, I have to use the FBX uh, converter to convert 2012s and 2013s. And just last time I had to do with, deal with all that, I was like, you know, I, I've learned something about this. A child would run from this. So we exported a mesh that was of the A variety, but we see that it didn't come to the right location. So let's actually export our OBJ again. And let's go back to Substance Painter. And I'm just gonna press F5. And here's our mesh. So this is what our mesh is looking like, at least without any texture baking. So let's bake our maps and just see if this gives us any leniency whenever it comes to the bake result. And if we click okay, we can pull back and see that we now have a much nicer bake 
you know, there's still a few areas that could use some improvements, but for the most part, we were able to mitigate some of the damage that was happening. However, I feel like we could probably tweak our settings just slightly just to see if we could get any improvements happening here. That one area is going to just torture us. But we see that we at least got nice round interpolation happening on the inside and it didn't bake that badly for what we were doing. However, for this area, we see that we got some warbles happening on our map. So this is where that polycount article I was reading came in handy because they were talking about this. And while I didn't completely understand everything, it did at least give me the spirit to want to try. And so we're just going to try adding some loops to basically protect these areas where the normals begin to get a little compromised. And we'll select everything. And under settings, we'll just choose export OBJ. And we're just going to replace the A mesh that we just exported. And so from here, edit project configuration, and we are just going to reload the A mesh that we imported. And nothing changes geometrically. However, if we go in and bake, we may have a bit of a luck change whenever it comes to dealing with this particular area. From certain angles, it actually looks correct, but whenever you look at it head on, it comes up as a warble. So I'm also thinking that we can go to the high and make some changes with that as well. For example, I'm just gonna select this loop and this loop, press period and set it to individual origins and we're just gonna S Y in order to just set it to be scaled in on the Y, giving us something a little bit more like that. Let's select everything, Q, settings, export, OBJ. And I'm just going to double click the high. And we're now waiting for it to replace it, which will just take a moment. All right, so now that we've exported the high again, let's load up Substance Painter. And we're just going to bake the maps. And the high is already set up in here, so hopefully it loads it into the RAM again. We're just going to bake it and just wait for it. And I feel that these are still the same results we got from our initial mesh. So let's continue messing with this. This is the object of obsession for today is how exactly do we deal with these sort of skews that happen because we could you know, we could also use a cage, but I often find it's easier to just deal with this via using the application Marmoset or an alternative draw application. Like usually if I have a problem with just one, I will just go to another program to just survive it. But I think that we are getting through it. However, these warbles are something that we are not going to be able to proceed with. You know, something's going to just have to be done for this. So going back into the bake settings. We'll raise our ray, change average normals, and just playing with some different settings just to see if we can get alternative results, seeing if averaging normals is part of it. And we see that now we've received a better bake out of this area. Now we are cooking. But at first I was beginning to worry about what I was seeing there because you don't want to see warbles that close whenever you're looking at these things, but you know, a little mesh mitigation definitely can help you there. Like I said, my reference for basically everything I do on 3D is pretty much poly count. I love that site. And I definitely recommend it for everyone who's um, trying to build those fundamentals because those people are definitely seasoned pros and have a deep understanding of 3D. So just get in there, you know, just lurk. You know, you don't have to be a Spurg and draw attention to yourself but you know be it be a part of it it's like blender artists and for this area 
I am not sure what happened there, but let's see if we can fix it. So I am going to lower my frontal rays and we're just going to bake it again and take a look at what we have. And this part is so insignificant in the grand scheme of this. It's like, should we get in and care about it? Especially because we're going to be looking at it like this the entire time. The answer is yes. You know, the answer may shock you. Like I said, you got to cut corners where people aren't going to be looking. If the corner is right in front of your face, of course they're going to see it. They're going to point it out immediately. Make you look like an asshat. So let us just get in and continue playing with these settings. I'm almost at wit's end with dealing with these settings over in Substance Painter. I'm about to open up Marmoset and just see what it looks like just baked out without all this um, nonsense happening. But I feel like Substance Painter is always just one setting change away from acting perfectly normal and behaving as you would expect. So if we look at this piece, all right. Well, not all right, but all right. That's what it looks like. This piece. Mm, I don't know. Even our screw, I feel, is a little bit sparse on the UV, so it's going to be a little bit quiet on the texturing side. It's not going to be able to show a whole lot of detail. So let's actually go to our mesh. And I'm just going to look at all the UVs. We're just going to select the, the bolt or the, um, the screw. And this is what we're looking at. This is what we have, and this is what we're looking at. So... I am going to just pack. Let's just move it off. And, you know, this is something I always find myself doing is just doing a little bit of importance mapping where just certain areas are just important enough that, you know, we can't just be giving them pixels. It's just so cruel. So we're just scaling it to fit. You know, this screw is going to be everywhere. So it needs to at least look adequate. And by pressing 4, I'm now at least able to deselect islands as I move around and get them placed where we need them. For these two pieces, we're going to have to be a little bit more crafty with how we're placing it. So I'm thinking for this one, we're going to have to unfortunately scale it down and fit it here. I know, strange, strange stuff, but it'll definitely pay off, especially compared compared to what I'm seeing in Substance Painter. I'm not going to let my screw get done like that. So OBJ, and we're just going to call this 02A low. And pop back open Substance Painter. One of these icons is Substance Painter. And I'm going to go to Edit, Property Configuration. And we want to arrange these by date modified so that way I can just quickly grab it first and we see that everything else is correct except for that area it's incorrect so let's get in and commence the baking and we just want to make sure that we have a nice screw happening on this mesh and then we may also do some baking in Marmoset just to uh, bring over some supplemental maps just to help it out because I do want to get onto texturing. The goal isn't to have baking studies because baking is just so much clicking and waiting. I'm just looking at that wondering, you know, should that be allowed to live? But we can let it live. We'll let it live for now. However, this area continues to be a ponderance to me. In fact, we could pop open Blender and I'm just curious. Of course we, okay, there are some double issues. Let's try removing doubles again, but I'm just gonna increase it just a little bit. I know, regrettable stuff. You know, maybe that much. I know. And that is also regrettable. I know it's regrettable. But I almost export it using vanilla blender settings, which is fine too. It's just I hate clicking all the extra buttons. So we're just exporting this out again. 
Well, let's go back to subs. Hey, we had 12 doubles. You know, I forgot to do a doubles check. But only the areas where we're going ice skating are the ones that are going to be questionable. So now we have our new mesh brought back in. Looking terrible, might I add. And that's good. You know, we want it to look terrible right now because when we bake it, it will hopefully look less terrible. And I'm hoping that it actually fixes this boundary and this area. You know, maybe the mistake was all ours and it was on the modeling side, which is also a good learning lesson to teach you guys today. Moment of truth is coming up in three, two, one. And we see that this looks just a little bit better. And this area is still just kind of a tragedy. I mean, this thing's going to be painted black. Why am I over obsessing? But also, what happened with this area? You know, I'm going to remove the ambient occlusion. And we see that it's more than just that. This is something that is on the normal map. So let's go back to Blender. And we check our high, check our low, check our high, check our low. And there should be no issues between our high and our low. In fact, everything else is looking pretty good. So why are we dealing with strange black lines appearing? Let's go back to bake our maps. And, you know, every time I play with these race settings without a plan, you know, things will just get weird. But I'm pretty sure I clicked something I wasn't supposed to. And this is us, you know, experiencing retribution. What is causing that? The rest of the mesh actually looks like it can work for where we're going with it. I feel like I should have put a few more rounds of smoothing in this area for the side holes. But other than this weird area that I just don't know why that's happening. Let us go back to Blender and we see that this is Doom Cylinder High, Doom Cylinder Low, and there's no other parts involved in it. If we remove verts, we see that there are none. And on this mesh, there is nothing that should be affecting us on export that we're unaware of. You know, we have our bevel, we have our mirror, we have our subdivision. What we're seeing in the viewport is the exact same thing. So I only have one choice. I can select everything and we have to just re-export our high. So settings, export, OBJ. And we're just going to export this as our piston 04 underscore 2 high. And instead of um, jumping over Substance Painter quickly and possibly loading an incomplete match, we might as well wait on Blender to tell us that it truly exported everything correctly. And the only way to know is it getting rid of the hourglass. Now that it's complete, we can go back to Substance Painter. We can remove our high, re-add our high, just because I'm superstitious. Let's look at our normal. What does that? Okay, cancel, cancel. We need to inspect the UVs. That was the last thing that we did of stupidity. Not that UVs are stupid, but we did stupid things um, previously that Let's look at Substance Painter. This is the piece that's having an issue. And so if we look at our 3D view, the piece in discussion is here. Let's just double check and make sure that layer one, layer two are sitting precisely where they need to be sitting. Let's 
Okay, and we found the source of the issue. So this piece was intersecting. Sometimes you just gotta think like a UV for a moment. I sincerely apologize for being so, what's the right word, re re in a video, but can't let that, can't even let that weird triangle live. I'm telling you, if you're gonna cut a corner, cut a corner that no one's gonna see because there's plenty of those corners you can be cutting. But if you cut a corner right in front of my face, I'm just going to say, why'd you cut that corner? So let's go in here, project configuration, and we're gonna reload our low. And we see that things are looking a little bit better, except not until we rebake everything that things will finally look truly the way that they're supposed to. You know, thing about baking is every bake is like a pain in the neck for me. I, I can bake if I have to, but I would definitely prefer someone else deal with it. But now we are getting somewhere. So finally we remove the situations happening there. This area is just going to look ugly forever. We have to live with that. But our screw is definitely looking a lot better and is carrying a lot more detail than it was previously. However, I worry about the geometry for it because it looks like it's flipped. So always something guys, Alt V, face orientation. And it looks like the flip face is not happening on the blender side. So. I was being dramatic. Let's go to layer one, layer two. And we see that both of these don't have issues with the flip normal so we can get out of face orientation. And I'm probably just being over obsessive. So let's just pull back. And at least with that, we have gotten started with the bake process in Substance, in substance Painter. Sorry about that. Let's save this as, and we'll just call this piston two and with that we can truly wrap up this video so you know maybe even to um, just have something to present we can remove this layer add a fill layer and then under base color we just choose ambient occlusion and at least then we have something that we can you know change to multiply and bring in subtly so that way we have a nice shading experience happening in the viewport. You know, maybe not too overbearing because then it looks a little cartoony, but you know, something like that, just a little extra AO and we are good to go. Let's look at our piece. We're able to admire our handiwork, nothing too bad happening as far as skewed normals or anything like that. So with that, I can wrap up this video for now and I'll see you guys in the next segment.